Okay, a huge good afternoon to everybody. It's two minutes past the hour. Seems like a natural time to get started this afternoon. I hope you've all had a good day so far. I hope you've been uh, digesting what uh, Rishi has been saying in the comments this afternoon. I'm sure you've all been very busy with that, so I do appreciate your attendance this afternoon. A huge welcome to Andy Solomon from Yonder. Andy's obviously with us today for the live Q&A session. Andy's waving. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be here. So I'll just go through some, uh, well, I'll say the uh, house rules. I've got one way around. Today's agenda to start with. So we've got a live Q&A with Andy. Andy's the CEO and founder of the Live Chat Pioneers in the UK property industry. That's Yondell as a live poll and some questions, of course, from you guys in the audience as well. It's a very interactive webinar today. So please get your voting fingers ready. Um, I guess what we're looking at is what you guys can do to make sure there isn't a stuttering start back to your business. Again, um, depending on what, uh, what news channel you uh, actually watch at the moment, who knows when uh, the property industry is going back. Um, I think I, I, I'm putting my bet on the 1st of June at the moment. Okay, you've also got uh, some really cool and interesting stuff from the guys at Dayloft Inform. So a big thank you to Rory and the team there. Uh, we're going to look at some insights on what's happening in the market in the last week and how you guys can uh, prepare to return to business as well. We've also got a little fun quiz. Everybody loves a quiz, of course. So again, get your votes and fingers ready for that. That's at the end. Okay, so um, just a couple of house rules, nice and simple stuff to be fair. All of you guys are muted to avoid any background noise and distractions. Um, please do use the questions option on the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, you probably just use the, uh, the orange arrow, which is probably the top right uh, of your screen. Um, you may need to expand the, 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 the control panel there so you can ask your questions. I will send the slide deck out later on today with a recording of the webinar to obviously any non-attendees, any of your colleagues, of course, which may have not been able to attend this afternoon. And by the way, if you do ask a question, if I don't get to it during a live session with Andy, if you do want an answer to that, I will stand the webinar for about 10 minutes afterwards to answer any questions you've got. Now, if you do want an answer to that question, please do not click on leave the webinar. Otherwise, I can't answer that question to you directly and you'll think I'm being rude, which of course I'm not. Okay, so we've got the agenda again there, just in case you didn't see the first one. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about, oh, okay, right, here we go. Right, okay, Andy. Hello. Welcome to you again. So, Hi. Andy. Going your this week? Well, we've um, had another week of tracking the data, really looking at what's actually happening out there in the marketplace. And, uh, and, and firstly, thanks very much for, for having us having me back on uh, to share to share some of this. You're welcome. And I and I hope that um, you guys out there uh, will will take some confidence from some of the things that I'm going to show, uh, sh share with you. But also, um, there's some real questions uh, to be to be asked. I think uh, a lot of people by now have seen that Yumble has been tracking uh, consumer sentiment on the state agency websites uh, for the last five weeks now, so through the majority of lockdown. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, just in case there are any, you know, Yumble is the, I guess, we're the leading provider of managed live chat services for estate agents in the country. Uh, we're working across about 3,800 offices, if you count it that way. Um, many major brands, so we've got national brands with regional and also local independents. And what this actually does is it enables us to have a really unique insight uh, into, into what's actually been, been going on. Um, do you want to move the slides on a bit? Yeah, of course. Questions. Let's go in the right direction this time. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Andy, I've got my first question for you. As yeah. we're here today. So I guess really that how do you think consumers are feeling now about the property market? Of course, a lot's changed since Sunday. A lot of people are a little bit confused, let's say, to say the least. And how do you think their sentiment has evolved throughout the lockdown period? And what are you seeing as well? What's 
really interesting. Well, there's many things that are interesting and quite a few things that are worrying. But what's what's really interesting in, in a lot of what we're seeing um, is how indecision and indecisiveness or lack of clarity then actually directly impacts sentiment. So if we cast our minds back to the week before lockdown, if we can remember back that far. So this was the, the week that ended around uh, Sunday, the 21st of March from memory, something around, around, around that. No one really knew what was happening. It was like a kind of a whirlpool syndrome where gradually these concentric circles were driving us all downwards and the sky was looking like it was falling in. And everyone was running around um, panicking and chasing their tails and just completely, um, uh, uh, you know, at, at their wit's end to know what to do with this completely, you know, it's unheralded uh, situation. Um, and since then, consumers um, and I think businesses as well, from that initial panic, we all moved, and I'm a business owner, we all moved into um, a mode which was one, firstly, um, consolidation survival make sure that we know what we've got, there's support from the government clearly with the furlough scheme and, and business interruption loans and grants and various other things that were available to people. Um, so a couple of couple of three weeks were spent you know, trying to trying to feel our way around in this, this very dark, gloomy um, uh, place that we all found ourselves in. But interestingly, then over the last four weeks or so, we've seen some real um, uh, uh, glowing embers turning into sparks that are actually trying to drive, drive, um, drive the market and consumers have had lots of time on their hands, uh, as indeed have business owners, estate agents, and all business owners out there. Um, there's been lots of time to actually think about what needs to happen next, what needs, what they, what they need to actually do, um, and and how they can possibly do it. And therein lies a lot of the disconnects. Then they're not connecting up properly, and no one really knows what is going to be possible and when it is going to be possible. Um, so I think. Um, looking at the, the second part of the question about how the sentiment has, has also evolved, I think gradually people have got used to various stages of new normal. I think they've adapted, but really, really interesting is that the, the underlying needs and desires that people have haven't really changed. Um, and in tracking this, this the sentiment, uh, we're seeing that consumers are really keen to get going again. And perhaps if you just move on one slide, please, Dave. Yeah, cool. Um, we can share, uh, oh, there's a poll. Okay, well, sorry, my, 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 my mistake. I thought we had the, um, the graph in there. Right, no problem at all. So we'd like to get you guys involved. So well, can I just, sorry, just before we, um, yeah, we, we sure. oh, just put some context around that. Um, we, we, we have seen um, overall, so this is not to steer the answers that you're going to give to these poll questions, guys, but, but, but we have seen overall, and I'm going to put some context to this later, uh, but we've seen significant drops in website visits to estate agency websites. So just, that, just, just, just to give that. Right, okay, so you guys in the room, are, what is it you're seeing? So first of the polls today, and by the way, I just a quick no polls. So what, where is your web traffic level versus pre-lockdown? Is it, I don't know, is it a lot higher or is it about the same? And just by the way, a couple of people on the webinar yesterday have said that they couldn't vote in the polls, unfortunately. I think sometimes it may well be as if you're watching on a certain type of mobile device, I know it was an iOS device a couple of weeks ago where someone couldn't see the video. So again, uh, the poll looks like it's working. We're getting the votes in, which is great. So again, where is your website traffic level versus pre-lockdown? I'll give it another five or 10 seconds there so you can all get voting. Okay. Some interesting stats here, Andy. Okie dokie. So what have we got? 32% said, I don't know, that's fine. 18% said, a lot higher, very interesting. And 50% half the room said, about the same. So that look, that brings me on lovely, so obviously your next slide, which is, what have you guys seen? Yeah, we're, we're um, I'm sorry, we've, 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 missed, we've missed out the sentiment tracker there, Dave. I don't know whether we can, we can get it back or is it further on in the slide? Yeah, no, 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 okay, I can, let me talk about this first and then we'll come back to the sentiment tracker um, afterwards, which is really important when it comes to the outcomes. Uh, okay. We've been doing uh, a lot of 
work looking at um, traffic across um, well that's actually it's the, it's the largest accounts that we work with so what this graph is showing is website visitors going back to January the 1st 2019 and this is actually a really robust set of data because this is reflecting what's actually happened through 28 million website visits right. uh, and it's so it's a large data, Andy. sorry it's a rather decent data set then it, it is a very it's a very very chunky data set uh, and it takes us obviously all the way through last year in the Brexit uncertainty. So the line to look at for website visitors is the red line um, mm -hmm. which you can see uh, we've, we've mapped against we've set what we've called a 62 week pre-COVID average so we've looked at the average line pre-lockdown and that's the dotted green line running across the middle of the um, the slide uh, and then the red line you'll see kind of you know goes up and uh, above and below and then you've got the seasonal downturn at the end of the year um uh brexit uncertainty throughout 2018 as we also had in the previous couple of years to that as well uncertain <laughs> trading conditions then we have the election and the real dip which combines um seasonal seasonal slowdown with massive amounts of political uncertainty leading up to the election in december uh the post christmas recovery which is the steep climb um and the so-called sort of boris bounce where you can see that website visits that red line again kind of arced over the top there uh, and then and then and then we hit the lockdown and when the lockdown came web traffic that we saw on our estate agency uh, sites that we were covering and this in this data set just fell off a cliff um, in some instances it went down uh, by by 50 percent um, a 35 to 50 percent drop was 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 pretty uh, normal across the board but now when we look at the couple of the other lines here which really indicate two things um, one what people want to do and two how they want to do it uh, so what we've actually seen is the other two lines are the uh, the blue line and the and the purple uh, the purple line uh, and what these are um, looking at is the blue line is the weekly volume of live chats as a proportion of website visitors so we've, we've normalized the data so uh, there's another graph moment which makes more sense of this uh, and then there's a the, the weekly number of leads that we've been capturing from live chat engagement uh, and uh, interestingly that as the as the web traffic fell steeply off a cliff the numbers of people engaging in live chat rose steeply as well so we had a reverse pattern which we've never seen before and where in some cases we had um, average website engagement rates via live chat of, of 1.3 percent which is very very normal for us for, you know all, all the time so it's a very small proportion of people that use it at any one time went up and peaked at 2.49 percent in april and what this actually resulted in was a consistently strong lead conversion rate which resulted in estate agents actually getting more leads more quality leads than they were getting previously from less people so when you dig into that a little bit deeper what you're finding is that the tire kickers are effectively gone mm -hmm. and you're left with the people who have a real need they are really motivated they they want to find out um, when they're going to be able to move now uh, we know that um, t demand from tenants uh, for example is now running at twice the volume that we would ordinarily see uh, demand has really kind of concertina down and caused a great big bottleneck so it's all bubbling up there and there's you know there's, and at some point it's going to have to be released uh, and so th th we've, we've been seeing significant um uh, 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 adoption of digital technology in order to be able to communicate now some of that might be driven by frustration because they're phoning up branches and getting no answers because we know not every estate agent has uh, sophisticated tele telephone systems or call handling uh, suppliers that are, that are helping them so calls might be going unanswered uh, equally emails are going unanswered and and actually this is as appointed to 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 people out there um you know we've seen a lot of businesses a lot of estate agents and other businesses that continue to operate remotely but all their emails have had to fall out of offices going back telling people or indicating that they're actually they're not open well they are kind of open but they're telling their customers or implying to their customers that they're not. So the customers are turning to 
new ways of communicating and, and live chat has, has just emerged and I'm obviously I run a live chat company and it's you know it's just not a sales pitch at all this is just a reflection of the data that we are seeing Joe Public are out there looking for ways to engage and they need to get an answer and here they're getting an answer within 12 seconds uh, and, and, and then they are signaling their intent to the agent which means that we're able to capture opportunities for people that otherwise would just be disappearing into the ether mm. does that does that make sense Dave yeah, it does indeed. Uh, we've got some interesting comments out coming up. There's a gentleman in Scotland who said he was 80% down just after lockdown. I mean, that's that's nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, it's people genuinely hankering down, aren't they? But as you say, you know, the, the, the good and positive signs are that, as you say, people are still visiting agents' websites. But again, as you say, the tire kickers, the carpet treaders, the thinkers of these world, you know, have gone to ground, which is good because I suppose what it is, the, the inquiries that you have got coming, as you rightly said, these, you know, these are the people who, you know, that, that want to get on the dance floor and do some business. Uh, absolutely right. There's a couple of other kind of factors that it's important just to consider, uh, and that is that as the sky fell in, everyone was looking to strip cost out of their business. And one of the first things to get was marketing spend. Um, so if they were doing uh, digital marketing, paying for, for pay-per-click or you know, Facebook advertising or you know whatever whatever it is out there uh, that was often one of the first things to to take a cut um, so that would also have a direct impact in the number of people coming through to websites so that that would that, that would impact it but at the same time there's a real opportunity there because um, the the rates for um, pay-per-click for AdWords for the words that you're bidding on um, when you're doing your advertising they've also fallen massively they're at a bargain basis level Yet people are engaging online in greater numbers than ever before because they're locked down, they've got nothing better to do, and they've all got one of these, and they're all on Facebook or they're all on, you know, doing whatever whatever they're doing. The opportunity to get in front of the right people at the right time is is very, very much there. Um, yeah. so this is about planning for the next the next stage, I suppose. Absolutely. So you've got some more detail uh, on this graph. Okay, so I'm just gonna flick to the next slide. Yeah. So so this is illustrating again. Um, what's actually happened in a, in, a, in a starker kind of way. So the purple line at the top is what we call the chat to lead conversion rate. And you can see, you know, so that means for, for, for every, for every um, you know, how many chats does it take for us to generate a qualified lead? And when we say a qualified lead, we mean uh, a lead from someone who is a, a, a motivated customer giving all of their information um that is becomes an actionable business opportunity now obviously it can be a tenant it can be a buyer but it can be a landlord and it can also be a vendor and 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 there's, there's you know it's a, it's a healthy mix of all of them so um that purple line is fairly constant all the way across and that's our kind of standard chat to lead conversion rate it hasn't changed in the last 18 months since january or well, less than 18, however long it is from january the 1st 2019 it's remained completely constant but then you look at the two lines down below um, so the, uh, the, the the blue line is the the number of uh, live chats that we manage, and the red yeah. line is the number of leads that are being generated from it. So you can see that the chat volume increased. So therefore, which is the blue line, and therefore the volume of leads increased, but the conversion rate has remained absolutely constant without any variation at all. Um, meaning, at the end of the day, as we said uh, just now, that is the more from less, that the, 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 the more opportunity are coming off websites that actually are having fewer visits. And there's a real kind of message um, here, I think, which is um, we'll lead into in a second. But really, it's around um, you know, consumer behavior. The, the consumer's in, com in control. Um, they are doing things in the way that they want to do it. Uh, they are not there waiting for someone to show them how they would like it to be done, but they want to do it the way they want to do it. And, and those businesses that are able to position themselves alongside that consumer behavior, so be in the places where the consumers are at the time where they are. Now, clearly, they're not walking down the high street at the moment unless they're going to, to Sainsbury's or something. Um, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're at home, you know, they're, 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 their high street right now is the, is the, is the digital highway, it's the, it's the websites that they're visiting, it's the social media engagement, yet they still have their aspirations over wanting to move, about finding their dream home, about, you know, we stalled our sale last year because of Brexit uncertainty, but you know what, we were all ready to go this spring and then this happened, is it going to be possible or not? Um, they're out there asking all these questions now as an estate agent you may not be able to help them right now um, 
in terms of actually executing the sale for them. Although we do hear, especially in the lettings, but we do hear plenty from our clients that think that the business is being done in a legitimate way that's not contravening the, the government um, rules and, and, and regulations, of course. Um, but what these people want and need more than anything else is, is a friendly guiding arm. It's a long game. It's not about just driving for that one deal. It's about, it's about building loyalty. Um, and, and for every one person that you help, and you give them a good experience, and you answer their questions, you manage their expectations, you give them solid advice, um, and you have an active profile in the local community as well, of course, and seen as a, as a giver as opposed to a taker, uh, someone who can be trusted, um, then, then those people will go away and they will be singing from the treetops about how helpful we've been, because everyone's looking for good news stories at the moment. And when someone goes out of their way to help, it gets noticed. And actually, I don't know what other people on this call think, this webinar think, but I, I think there's far more acknowledgement of good things going on out there publicly now than there has been for you know for years. Uh, yeah. People like to to trumpet about and, and call out about things that they've seen that they think are good things that people have done. Um, mm. Of course, you've got the you've got the garden fences out there wanting to gloss about things people shouldn't have done as well. But um, <laughs> but, at the, but at the same but at the same time, people are looking for good news stories, and you can be part of that good news story. Bring in one, one person, give them a good experience. They bring in their family, their friends, their, their networks. They share more broadly on their you know, growth of community pages on things like Facebook. This stuff gets out there really, really, really fast. Yeah. You know, um, just a slight aside, but uh, before VE Day on, on Friday or Saturday in the local Facebook group for the village where I live in Sussex, uh, someone actually had in their garage um, a, 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 an, air, an air raid siren. And um, and he and he put a he put a picture of it up on on the local Facebook group and asked people whether anyone had access to three phase um, power, so he could maybe sight, sound the all clear at three o'clock in the afternoon, thinking what a great idea this would be. I don't believe the, you know, the criticism that he got from people about how it was it not or or people with dementia who may be traumatized from the war still or it didn't happen. Wow. <laughs> so wow. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the yeah. Local, we've, we've, we've got local neighbours setting off fireworks now at eight o'clock on a on a Thursday. The local dogs enjoy that, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so obviously, what obviously once the agents' offices reopen, and again, I'm going to put my money on the first of June. Do you think consumers will continue to behave online when the offices are open, or will they just go, "Oh, let's go and see Janice and Bob at the local"? Hmm. What do you think will happen? My view is that I don't think we're going back anytime soon to anything resembling where we were before. Um, I think we're in this now for the long haul. Uh, this virus is not, not going to go away. Uh, it's going to remain within society for a long time to come. Um, the likelihood of any kind of vaccine or something being, being, being created, which is going to help us, is a remote hope, I think, at best. Um, and it's going to be about managing risk. Um, and and how you manage risk um, in all levels in your life is really, really important. And I think you've also, you'll also see that you know, the statement from the government at the weekend, the, from the Prime Minister on, 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 on Sunday, and actually some of our data has reflected this, that people started holding back at the back end of last week as they're waiting to see what was said on Sunday. And then, of course, there are, depending on where, where you sit, but there's been a, you know, a large amount of criticism about the lack of clarity. Um, but I think that the that, that, that Joe public are going to continue to be, on the whole, very cautious about what they do. This isn't just the customers, but it's going to be your workforce and the staff as well. People aren't one of what going to want to come. I mean, a lot of estate agent offices are, let's face it, are quite small and cosy, should we say. You know, mm. people are sitting fairly close to each other. Um, it, it, the, the idea of working remotely is going to be embedded, and that's also going to be meaning that consumers will will look to interact with businesses in the ways that they've been developing over, especially in in, in recent weeks. Yeah, um, certainly we think uh, people using live chat and other and other digital communication channels as opposed to the phone or email um, and, and and video calling. And it was on a on another uh, webinar this morning where uh, we were talking partly about. Uh, Phone systems, just being phone systems, no, that's not enough anymore because now everyone's used to seeing everyone's faces on Zoom or um, one of the other platforms to go to meeting. Um, and actually, you should be, you know, quite possibly, you'll be looking for an integrated telephone and, 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 and video conferencing facility yeah. because it's perfectly normal to call up Mr. Smith with a video call. 
you know, as opposed to as, yeah. as opposed to hoping to get her on a on on, on a telephone. Um, and and I think that people aren't going to want to go into places unless they have to. Um, I, I think if they don't feel the need, and let's face it, you know, state agent offices the footfall across the threshold has been declining for years. Um, and this is there's nothing to suggest that this situation right now is going to increase the likelihood of people stepping into offices. Mm. If anything, it's going to decrease it further. Yeah, uh, but I'm thinking. I mean, Gallandi, yeah, obviously, you know, we both worked in in the properties for you know many years, and I was just thinking just then when you were saying, I thought, well, you know, how many agents offices can I recall in going in when there's actually an in and out door policy? Yeah. Yeah. And if, if I was to be a little bit provocative, if you were thinking about all oh, this, you know, the office has been closed. Once well, before we actually get back in, there, it's a good opportunity to give it a lick of paint and a quick renovation and all the rest of it, and make it look spick and span for reopening. Mm. I would just ask you the question: What are you doing with your website? What are you doing with your digital assets? What are you doing with your investments in social media marketing? These are the places where your customers are going to be. These are the places where you stand the best chance of building and nurturing relationships of people which then result in these video these video calls and 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 and, and ultimately face-to-face -face meetings you know i think viewings i think you'll see the number of viewings per property before it sells um physical viewings diminish and, and shrink and a lot more people using virtual viewings as a way to sift through the possibilities um and draw up draw up their, their, their shortlist of course it's not the same for everyone it would be different for different people yeah. but in general um, the number of viewings will, in my, in my mind, will probably um, shrink, especially in lettings, mm. especially in lettings where people are just coming in for a year. You know what? Yeah, that'll be all right for a year. If I just had a good feel, yeah, that'll do kind of thing, you know. Um, so, so it's thinking very carefully about uh, how you position your business uh, ready for um, not just change consumer behavior, but change consumer expectations over what they want from an estate agent. What choices do they want? So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough because it's going to take a lot of people out of their comfort zone because you're not necessarily going to be able to do things the same way that you've always done them before. Yeah, just just a quick point on that as well. It was a funny one, actually. I talked to one of my friends and uh, a lot of the uh, the large companies, uh, he had a email from Cathy Rouge about uh, how he would feel comfortable in coming back into that environment. And one of them was, um, table service by your mobile phone which is quite interesting given that the very controversial man who uh, runs jay weatherspoons of course has been mm -hmm. for a while so it could be ahead of the curve there but again it's interesting and again it might be an idea it's, you know we, we all know with the free survey monkey things is that you actually send out uh, a survey to your customers and your sellers your landlords on how they prefer to be contacted and dealt with Moving forward, Andy's right, you know, this is going to change a lot of things. Brings us on to uh, our next poll. So, it might be an obvious one, I hope. Will your website be more sane or less important to your business after lockdown? Don't worry, it, it, it is, I, I don't share the answers by the way, so if someone puts less, don't worry, it's <laughs> fine, we'll forgive you, you can come back. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm let, less yet, so uh, <laughs> working out another five or ten seconds. Okay. Well, Andy, it goes to prove we are absolutely preaching to the converted this afternoon. We've got a good congregation in. 86% said your website will be more important for you post lockdown. So uh, thank you for voting on that. That's awesome. Thank you all. So yeah, thanks, guys. That, that is interesting. And it's and and don't don't forget that um, uh, having a really high performing website with this associated uh, real estate of social channels and everything else feeding into it, uh, the more effective you can make your own marketing, the less reliance you'll have on people like Rightmove. You know, um, this is just a, if you're driving your own leads, you 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 start to create more choices. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of, we, you know, we obviously have 
we know of course what's going on in that in that media space at the moment regard the portals as you say and the you're yeah. right and so looking at other ways of lead generation and you're absolutely right um spending time on the on your website is rather important let's say so yeah. And there's one, one other thing I will just say on that is that the website doesn't necessarily need to be everything for everyone as well. Because um, when you try to do that and you try to please everyone, it, it can be a huge, huge, huge task and it's very confusing to get your head around. Um, and in a conversation with, with um, one of um, uh, one agent I know, he, he works as um, the part of the management team for a large national brand, he basically said, you know, we spent all these years. Um, doing kind of broadcast marketing, you know, leaflet drops down, you know, how many houses and our online marketing all done kind of in general because we thought, you know, it's looking for people wanting to sell their houses. We thought we had a kind of a light bulb moment. So hang on a second, you know, in these days where we've got all this data and we can tr and we can track things through, let's go and have a look and see who are the people that have actually transacted with our brand in the different areas. Mm. And then if we understand who those people are, that makes a perfect estate agent a customer in mm -hmm. Leicester or in Northampton or in Plymouth or wherever it may be then with the power of social media marketing you can specifically target those kind of profiles in those towns because why would you waste your money going after people who've never actually the type of person who's never actually transacted with you yeah. there's interesting stuff out there yeah there is I mean analysis of data I mean I'm quite geeky at times you know with stuff like this and I remember I did used to work for a property portal. I think the guys in the room know me, uh, will know that. But again, analysing where your leads come from geographically as well, really important. I remember having a conversation with, uh, you know, similar to what you're saying, and I was still have eight pages in the local media. I go, well, what do you have? That? Well, I'll have that for, uh, you know, um, for instructions. Okay, so uh, show me a map of where all your instructions are and where all the people are. And it was something daft, like only 30% were actually in the circulation region of the newspaper he was spending quite a lot of money on. So again, an, 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 uh, I can't even say the word, analysing your data and your leads is really, really, really important. And again, if you, you know, you guys in the room want any advice on that, you know, we'll both help you with that, you know, really, and uh, really interesting stuff to, uh, to get your teeth into. So Andy, on to the next question here. So, what can agents do to make their websites work harder in the future and, and what should they do to be classed as, as ready for you know when when this all comes back which will be fairly soon um well the websites just need to be up to date they need to be you, know, you need to find a good partner who can help you create something that's going to be a high can well driving large and solid engagement from the types of people that you think make your perfect customer, understanding your customer profile, making it geared to them, but personalizing the experience as much as you possibly can um, for, 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 for people. But you can, help, you can create the big wide funnel at the top, and we all know, I'm not saying anyone on this call, this webinar is, is, is guilty of this, but the estate agency sector in general is renowned for being incredibly poor at managing its leads. And um, so your, your, your website is just your, is, is essentially it's your front door and, the, and, your, and your front room. Uh, but if you want to get them into the kitchen, you want to get them cooking up something. So you've got to actually start thinking about how you can maximise the opportunities that your leads actually present. So it's not just today's leads, it's yesterday's leads, it's last month's leads, it's six months ago, it's a year ago, it's five years ago, it's ten years ago. You know, how many of your, um, how many people that have bought a property from you have you failed to follow up with at some point after they've completed that purchase? At some point, they're going to sell that house. So building relationships with your data, building relationships with your database, using um, good solid communication channels, briefing market obviously comes to mind for, 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 for something like this, ensuring that, um, that, uh, that you, you know, internally, um, new leads that are coming through, you're, you're jumping on. Um, you know, we see at Yondal that not every customer that comes onto the website and engages, or well, not just on website, we, we post live chat and emails and social channels as well, and various other places, SMSs and various other places, but not every person who states their intention, that's really what they need. So we know that a person looking to buy their dream homes isn't necessarily just a buyer. Actually, there might be a vendor, there's very early stages, early doors, and no one, they're not speaking to any estate agent, they're selling their property. You need to be treating every single lead as gold. 
you know, uh, and tenants and buyers alike, everything that needs to be treated as gold, and how flaky it looks like on the surface. But obviously, there are things that you can do to improve the qualification of those leads to to to, to help you identify where the higher value opportunities um, actually actually are. Um, and and that you know, is looking at your, your, your sort of the nurture campaigns and content that you may be creating. Video is absolute gold here, and will continue to be massively consumed um, and if it goes, goes on. People are getting used to being on these webinars or Zoom calls and seeing each other's faces. Uh, you've got to get your, cat, your, your face in front of a camera and you've got to be talking to your audience. And your audience needs to associate um, you and make it personal. Um, you know, it's, it's all about personality. Um, and, and you know, be ready. The clock is ticking. I mean, the time for any time for procrastination has long since gone now in this lockdown period. Um, actually, you could argue that um, if you haven't been doing very much in the last few weeks, it's a it's a big catch up game to be done now uh, because things are going to at some point start to ease. Uh, what we have are the I call it kind of a constipated sort of market situation where you've got the need to do something the inability to do it um, yeah, but at some absolutely. point that is going to start to start to free up if you want to be part of the solution to the problem you need to be planning for that now you need to be building those relationships and i would say apart from obviously the, the, the natural things about your processes your platforms um, looking at you know cost efficiency uh, it's a great opportunity now to actually work out where you're spending your money and where you do need to continue spending money given so many of you will probably have staff that would have been furloughed during this period, probably still are furloughed, although we are hearing increasing stories of our clients bringing people back uh, now, especially in meetings. Um, uh, but so, so you've got all that kind of stuff, but the biggest and the best thing you should do is about building relationships, is about, is about having a profile in your community, is about being that helping hand, as I, as I, as I said earlier. Um, and then start looking at other things down the line, start looking at what conveyances are doing, you know, who, who are you working with? How are they geared up to be able to support you when you need to get some of this stuff moving? Um, yeah. I was speaking to one uh, of my uh, conveyancer friends uh, this uh, last week, and his, his expectation was that 8,000 solicitors are going to be going out of business as a result of coronavirus. So um, there's a lot of cases that just haven't been progressed. So the solicitors that you're working with, what are they doing? What have they done over the last few weeks? Are they geared up to be able to compete, to be able to help you? If not, maybe you need to think about looking for other ways to other other other, other solutions to the conveyance of needs that, that you're going to have. Because if you can't get the deals through, then you're not going to get paid. Um, and beyond that, looking for removals as well. Same case. There's a lot of removals businesses that are completely mothballed. They've 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 they've, they've um, parked up their trucks. They've put them on fire and theft um, insurance, and they can't take them out on the road even if they wanted to. Um, so finding finding the businesses that are going to be able to help your customers actually move physically at the end is also yeah, interesting. interesting. I mean, I've just a, a spoiler on that for Thursday. We've got a uh, Mr. Pitcherillo, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he's me yeah. <laughs> uh, on Thursday about that as well. And we're getting some really cool and up to date information on that. Just a little bit wary on the time at twenty to the hour, so. Got our next poll, so get ready to vote. The quiz is coming soon, by the way, quiz fans. This is the next one. Do you think your website and marketing is ready for the new norm? Do you need to enhance your digital capabilities? I mean, be honest again, you know, um, nobody's judging here. There's no judge or jury. This isn't Judge Rinder. Is it the time for Judge Rinder? Not usually home. <laughs> but it used to be anyway, it used to be having a night. I didn't even know who he was until a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think your website and marketing is ready for everyone's favourite new word from furlough? The new norm. Do you need to enhance your digital capabilities? Okay. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. So, we've got. Uh, 14% there, yep, 100% ready. Good to hear, excellent stuff. 41%, very thank, thank you for that. Very honestly said no. 45% uh, you have to probably do the digital health check. Um, I was um, doing some analysis over the week, and Andy knows it's a, it's a mutual partner of both Brief Your Market and, uh, and Yomdel. And I was deep diving into said agents. Google Analytics, please, if you have time, 
talking about how important your website is. If you've never logged into your Google Analytics, please do. It's the equivalent of having 100 people an hour, or maybe 100 people, half, anything half day, and not understanding if anybody within your branch actually spoke to them. Very, very interesting. And again, the guys that are on the, the, the webinar today, who brief your market customers, uh, you know, we are the experts in marketing, lean on us for that. I've got nearly 20 years of, of advertising and marketing experience. I'll be more than willing to help you with that and get geeky with the numbers. So, Andy, so what are you and on Brief Your Market working on together? And what are we doing? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually an interesting question because we, we haven't addressed this in this um, in these series before. I don't think directly have we? And and, and and where 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 um where Yondel sits? You know, we're a supplier, um, uh, but it's not an arm's length relationship. Yondel is a collab collaborative partner and ultimately a friend to its clients. Um, and my business can't thrive and survive if I don't deliver. We don't deliver success to our clients. Uh, and it's very apparent over the years that I've been doing this that you know you go and sit down with a business and they're just going through what can they really call supplier fatigue because there's too many different things competing for their attention, too many different invoices coming across their desk, lots of shiny things being pitched to them the whole time. Yeah. And actually, what they really need more than anything is that they need a clear run at doing what they do really, really well, which is being really good estate agents and then have the right tools in their armory that are going to enable them to, to maximize the opportunity, feed the engine, fuel the engine, so they can go and actually go away and be successful at what they need best, which is being a really good estate agent. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really where um, the, the notion of using partners, using suppliers working together can actually multiply then the effectiveness and the results that we're able to achieve. And Briefly Market, of course, has this you know, really, really switched on a fantastic um, marketing platform, email marketing platform, and, and all the other data and everything else that Briefly Market can do. Uh, Yondel is all about the conversion. Um, so through live chat, and, and, and we do mystery shopping and some, some research stuff as well. But when we look at what Briefly Market is doing, uh, and if Yondel is integrated for a, for a joint client into Briefly Market emails, for example, we know that you can put a call to action in front of someone that resonates with them, a vendor, say. Um, the, the moment they can then click on that, and 12 seconds later, they can be chatting with a, a fully trained Yondel operator who will uh, know that they've engaged with that, will know they're a prospective vendor, will treat them as such, will give them a great experience, and generate a highly motivated potential customer straight through. And, that's them, and through integrating Brief Your Market and Yondel, that means we're able to increase the conversion of the, um, uh, well, increase the clicks and the conversion off of the, of the emails that are coming in from Briefy Market, um, and also increase the value in what we're able to offer to our clients together. So you end up with qualified vendor leads at a relatively lower price than you would have paid before, but it's all about the investment. You make the right investment, you spend the right pound in the right place to, to, make, to make the right return, um, then the jobs are done. This is, yeah. you know, and that's also one final thing I will say um, about Briefy Market is they're a really good bunch of guys, um, and, and I'm obviously completely biased because we decided to work with them. But but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but we did that. But we did that because we genuinely believe that Briefy Market has the ability to be able to enhance our our ability to be successful um, for our clients, which in turn means that our clients are successful. Yeah. And again, uh, guys, uh, that are on the the, the webinar this afternoon, obviously mutual with Yondell and, and Brief Your Market. If you want more detail on that, of course, do speak to us. There's, there's yeah. so many elements you, you know you can do. And Andy's absolutely right it's about putting your pound in the right place and getting the, the best return for that. So we've taken some questions throughout. And obviously, there's any unanswered ones there, of course, I will come to them. Um, we've got a very quick section, probably about five minutes. On, uh, from the guys, big thank you to Rory from from uh, from Dale up and that's some really really cool stuff here. And we've got the quiz as well, it's just for fun, no, no prizes today. Um, but it, basically, it's about how uh, data lot are using market insights to gouge sentiments. Quite a bit of uh, text on the screen now. I'll just let you digest what's on the screen now, and I'll just make a comment on that afterwards.
So again, with this, I guess what it is, it's another string to uh, to our bow in, in the in the family of Briefia Market, Data Loft, Yondel, and the others, of course, as well. We've got more partners on the webinars later this week. But again, it's about you being ready and us really giving you the information to see how probably how fast you need to is it worth unfurlow staff? So what a day it last seen. Okay. We all know about the interest rates now, of course, and a consumer confidence, of course, uh, is, is an all-time low since record began. However, okay, then there's a big however here. Um, the Bank of England expects the economy to contract by 14% in 2020. However, and we spoke about it before, there is pent up moving demand from, obviously we have the old waves after Brexit, we had the Boris Banks and we had COVID. We're expecting that to rebound by 15%. The Bank of England, I say we, I'm not the Bank of England. <laughs> but the, uh, the middle of next year, we should be back to some top of equilibrium and hopefully, of course, uh, some uh, some growth as well. The growth of ROCS. So again, there's another report due out next week from those guys. Um, again, pretty obvious that, of course, in March there has been deterioration uh, in house buyer sentiments, of course. Um, Savills and Knight Frank, of course, the Bank of England have all been getting their crystal balls out and what have you. But again, RICS uh, also reports that rents, again, you will talk to landlords, could stagnate over the next 12 months. But the five year forecast, so any landlords that talk to you and they're just in it for capital growth or it's a pension, the average annual growth could still be two and a half percent. Okay, there's rumours. We've heard the rumours for a while. Uh, how to buy could be extended in an attempt to kickstart the house building industry after lockdown is lifted. Um, good news is from the guys at rather than Zupa though, that um, Zupa reports stock levels per agents only 1% lower month to month, so 7th of April back to 7th of March, and Royal Moon report available stock to sell is only 2.6% down across the UK since lockdown. That's a really genuinely good sign for us. So okay, data loft, what did our sentiment survey show? I felt very less Dennis then, or Vernon K for the slightly uh, younger ones in the crowd. We recently <laughs> Over 70 agents. Okay, the results show usual mar house marketing was starting to bend. But again, I'll just let you digest what's on there and I'll make a comment. Okay. The, on the third point down on the slide there, uh, please tune in on Thursday uh, from the fantastic Tony from AV Willow Solicitors about the, the average time between exchange and completion and obviously around the whole process once a, an offer has been agreed. Really genuinely interesting stuff. Interesting as well about the interest from cash buyers and bargain hunters. Not significantly increased yet. A lot of people I speak with who've got money in the bank uh, who can't buy me a beer at this very present moment, of course. <laughs> they are looking and they're going, hmm, okay, potential depression, is it a time to invest? So again, do you talk to your landlords, investors, overseas investors, of course, about the fact that there's a, an impending 2%, uh, 2%, I believe it is, yes, um, surcharge on buying properties in the UK. From overseas. So again, interesting over the coming weeks how your story will change for certain different areas of the market. So, okay, so how could COVID 19 impact rental income? Which is a really, really interesting one. Again, it's a brilliant data set from the guys at Data Lock. Many young professionals have moved back to family homes until they decide to return to rental before lockdowns lifted. I can say that as a current landlord, that's exactly what's happened to my tenant in Coventry. She moved home with her parents because she wasn't sure about her job situation. 
Liverpool, Sheffield, Leeds and Birmingham, over 35% of leases expire in Q2. That's massive. Are you speaking to your tenants with their landlords to make sure you're getting them tied in? Tied in even? Tied in? Tied in. Okay. So, uh, what action can you take? Landlords should look after tenants throughout this period. We're all trying to do that, of course, and encourage the renewals. Um, how might falling earnings in the whole UK economy impact rental income? The average tenant spends 27% of their income on rent. So, if earnings fall by 20%, we know why, that ratio is pushed to 34% or 38% in London. Okay. So where is the stretch affordability here are the most exposed to falling earnings? There is a, a, a breakdown on there, which I will send in the uh, in, in the notes afterwards. Okay, what action can you take? Plan for no low, sorry, or no rental growth, that's that myself, or just safeguard your existing tenants, keep them close. So we've not got a crystal ball, but uh, the analysts at Data Love got their crystal ball and I got all missed it, Meg. Uh, how fast might transaction volumes recover in 2020? We know from the Zupa research that 373,000 home sale agreed before lockdown have been put on hold. So if new sales hit 40% of normal in June, August could turn out to be the busiest month in 2020. So again, if you guys are thinking, when do I bring my sales staff back? That just might be an idea. Sales will probably dip in the autumn once the backlog of that has been clear. Now, again, the guys here are estimating just under 880,000 homes will sell in the UK in 2020, and that will be a 25 cent drop from 2019. So, okay, so what action can you take? You know, of course, I deliver these daily webinars, so anything I'll pick up. And again, from our key partners, Yondell and Data Loft Inform, we'll keep an eye on the market trends for you. But just keep the conversation going with your clients. Don't go to sleep or to hibernation like a lot of agents have. They, believe me, will be playing catch up. What Andy said just before then, I'll try to think back what I was talking about before lockdown. It seemed like months ago now, believe me. So we have to finish today a fun quiz. So get your voting fingers at the ready. And this is provided by the guys at Data Lock. Go for a bit of fun. So, which year set the property sales, set the record for property sales across the UK? 2006, 2014, or 2016? And this is data lockdown, HMRC data. Let's see how you or guys will get on with this today. We've certainly, got a, we've certainly got a popular answer there. I'll give it a 10 seconds for you guys. Okay, You'll, I'll trust you all to mark your own answer sheets, by the way. The correct answer was 2006. 1.668 million before the great financial crisis, as you're well aware. Right, number two, interesting one here. Again, one for your landlords. What do you think the average UK house price has risen by since 2000 with the normal adjustment of inflation? The last 20 years, what do you think the average UK house price has risen by? Down to 10 seconds there so you guys can have a vote. It was indeed 61%, 19% in the room got that one. Okie dokie. Next question How are we all doing? Nice topical on this, Andy. What was the average? 
value of a house in 1945. Obviously, we marked the 75th anniversary VE Day last week. Was it £10,000? Was it £2,400? Or was it £620? £620 wouldn't get you a working car nowadays, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe slightly working car. Wouldn't go very far, man. Not that it matters at the moment. I'll get another 10 seconds. We've definitely got some data lock customers on the line today. <laughs> okay. A math in 0% of you. Voted 10,000. Well done to you lot. For the guys that said 2,400, it's good, but it's not right. He was actually 620 pounds. Well done to 73% of you in the room today. Question four of five. What is the average length of time buyers live in their homes according to the English Housing Survey? Is it the seven year itch? Is the 18 year itch or is it the eight year itch? No, sorry, I apologize. I, I read that wrong. Seven years, 10 years, or 18 years. It's a long way back. Oh, Tuesday. Wow. So just to confirm that seven years, 10 years, or 18 years. Now, the answer to this shocked me, by the way. I have to say, I wouldn't have got this right at all. We'll give them 10 seconds for the guys who haven't voted yet. We're all competitive. You can post me your answers afterwards. Okay. One, two, three. That's gone. Right. If you voted seven years, you're incorrect. If you voted 18, 18 years, you're correct. Mental. And the 18 year itch. Wowzers, that's absolutely nuts. That's 32 percent of you. Well done. Right, final question of the day. Interesting one for landlords, this by the way. What percentage of the homes in the rental sector are fully let? Are that are let are fully or part furnished? So what percentage of homes in the rental sector are let fully or part furnished? We've got an interesting fact off the back of the answer to this, which I didn't know. It's quite interesting. I don't know a lot, but again, I was a bit surprised with this, uh, this answer. Andy, what, what's your guess? What do you reckon? 31%. 31%. Mm. Well, we've got a very even split in the room today. Be skewed by students, wouldn't it? Quite, pos quite possibly. Okay, we'll close the quiz. The answer, Andy, well done, it was 31%. Now, I get nothing else right in my life. <laughs> gold star, sir. Gold star. <laughs> furnished flats achieve a premium of around 11% to unfurnished flats. So after this webinar, I'm off to go to the I on the IKEA website. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff there from Data Lock. And again, that'll be a regular feature for us going forward. So, again, a huge thank you to, uh, to Roar and the team of Data Lock for that. That's brilliant. Okay, so what's coming next? We've got the fantastic Stephen J. Brown. Tomorrow, 25 years in the industry. We've got a lot of. Stephen, he is brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Spoke with Stephen earlier. Good guy. Knows his beans. 25 years in the industry. Tony Picciarillo, getting your cases to exchange faster. Fantastic. Back by popular demand, that's on Thursday. I'll send you links for you guys to uh, to register for these, by the way. And again, for you guys looking at plugging that revenue gap, we've got a great presentation with SDL auctions on Friday morning as well. So again, an absolutely huge thank you to you guys for attending this afternoon. A massive thank you to Andy for giving up his time. I think every webinar I've mentioned, Andy, so I do appreciate your time in there. Uh...
in getting involved with me for briefing markets. Thank you ever so much, Andy. I do really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Always an absolute Thank pleasure. Thank you ever so much. So all have a great night. If you want to post your, uh, your quiz score to me, if anyone's got five out of five, let me know. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon, normal time, three o'clock, for a webinar with, uh, with Steve and Jay Brown. All have a great night. You take care. I'll speak.